Now, if you've watched my videos before, you may be very confused why my system looks like this. I do have an explanation for it, and I'll get to that in just a bit. But before we get to that, I want to explain what we're actually looking at today. So, I want to start looking at some awesome modules. So, the awesome window manager has a lot of plugins and a lot of modules, some of which are less useful than others. This one I would say is way more on the useful side. So this is a module called Awesome Collision, which basically makes it visually apparent which direction movement bindings are going to go into. Now, that seems like something that's like fairly obvious, but there are some actions inside of Awesome where it's not entirely clear where a window is going to move to, especially if you're running a multi-headed system. For example, when you move your focus between monitors, when it gets to the final monitor, it doesn't stop right there and put you at like a hard border. It actually goes and focuses back on the first monitor. And if you have your monitors in a line, it may not be entirely clear where that focus is going to go to. Now, because this is developed by one of the main developers of Awesome, a lot of the bindings resemble the default bindings in the Awesome config, which mean that a lot of them are kind of bad. Um, you can change them, but we'll get to why that's a bit of a problem a bit later in the video. For now, we'll just be working with them as they are out of the box. Okay, I've got three windows right here, and right now I'm focused on the one on the left. So, this is the one with the light grey border. So, if I go and press super and then an arrow key, as we're going to see, let's say I press right, for example. It's now going to have a red circle on my new focused window, and then it shows the directions I can press to actually go and focus on different windows. So if I go and press left now, it will go back to the original window, and down it will go to the one below it. But one thing you can't see is over on my third monitor, it actually shows that if I press the right arrow key, it will go and focus on that window there, even though it's a floating window. So now what I see is if I go and press the right arrow again, it will actually go and focus on my monitor I have OBS on, and on the main monitor you're seeing, if I press left or down, it will focus on one of those two windows. So I'm going to go and press right, and now all of the focus is away from the main screen, and it's all on my secondary screen. Now for moving a window, it's not going to be as clear, so right now I've got LF opened in the one I'm going to be moving around. So if I go and press super shift, and then a direction, it will move it in that direction, and then it actually shows me, instead of where the window is located right now with the dot, where it was located previously. Now, I feel like this is a bit of a bug, and it probably should be the other way around, so it's in line with things like focus. But if I go back over here, I never knew that I could go and press down, and would move it into that position down the bottom. I didn't realize there was any way to actually go and add to that. That actually is kind of nice to see. Okay, so moving over to floating windows for just a bit. One of the things you can do is press super control and then a direction, and that will let you change your floating layer. Now, floating layer, just for the sake of this, think about it like changing your focused window, but only consider the windows that are currently floating. So if I go and press super control and then a direction, as we'll see, if I press right, it will go and focus on this one here, and left, it will focus on this one here. Now, I can also press down and up, but it only shows one of the options. But if I'm on, say, this one right here, and I go and press right, it will actually go and focus on my third screen, and if I go and press up or down here, I can actually get back to one of these floating windows, and I had no idea that down or up was going to do that. So let's go and press down, for example, and now we're back to this one right here. Now, this isn't one that's super visually apparent, but it is a nice addition as well. So if I go and press super... Control shift and then a direction it will actually go and move the floating window to the far side in that direction So if I press down right now, it'll move it right to the bottom if I press right It'll move it to the right hand side up so on and so forth It is a nice thing to have I don't typically care about it because when I use a floating window I typically want the window to be acting like a floating window Basically what I mean is I want my floating windows to be an absolute mess we can also go and adjust the size of a window, but I feel like the way they've set it up is a little bit weird and might actually be kind of a bug. So if I go and press Super Alt and then a direction, it will actually show all of these little icons here. And then if I press the direction of the icon, it will resize in that direction. So right for right, down for down, so on and so forth. Now to decrease the size of a window, this is where it gets a little bit buggy. So the key combination is Super Alt and Shift, but if you go and press that, it doesn't actually work. What you actually have to do is Super Alt, show the little icons here, and then if you press Shift, it will let you go and resize it. 
I feel like that's not supposed to be how that works, but if you don't do it in that order, it just won't function at all. No matter how much you press it, it's just not going to do anything. But if you're like me, and when you have a floating window, you'd much rather just use your mouse, it actually does show the same thing when you resize with your mouse as well. Obviously, when you have a mouse and you're resizing, it's not really as, you know, visually important to see, hey, look, if I go in this direction, it resizes in this direction. That's sort of, I guess, understood by the way you're moving your cursor, but it is still a nice addition to have it working consistently. Now, this part I think could be really cool, but for some reason, it's just never working on my main screen. So if you want to go and cycle through all of my different tags, what we can do is press Control alt and then press either left or right. Obviously, up and down in this case aren't going to do anything too useful. So if I go and press right, it shows me all of these little icons up the top here, and what these are supposed to show are the windows that are actually on that tag. And it's not actually showing me anything, so on my main screen, it seems kind of useless. Now I'm going to swap over to my second screen and show you what it's supposed to look like. Now this doesn't seem to be a problem with running OBS and it doing weird things with my screen. It seems to specifically be a problem with this application because even when OBS isn't running, it has the exact same problem. So if I go and say add some windows here, and as we can see, now it actually shows all of those windows inside a little icon there. I think this is a really cool feature. I don't know how to fix it. I don't know why it's not working on my main screen. I haven't changed any of the default settings, so there's something going on here. We can move our focus between monitors by doing a control, super, alt, and then a direction. Weirdly, this one doesn't show an arrow, it shows numbers instead. But if we go and press a number, it doesn't actually go and focus on a different monitor. So this seems to be another weird inclusion. I'm not entirely sure why that's the way they did their focus. If they made it so it showed an arrow, I'll, I'll understand that. But as it is, it seems like a weird addition. Now, more on the weird behavior is moving a tag to a different screen. I was testing this earlier, and I didn't understand how it was working because it's working in a really, really dumb way. So if we go and press, this is going to sound really dumb, Control shift super alt then the direction we move in, it's going to grab the tag from that screen and move it over to the screen we're currently on. Instead of moving the tag we're currently on into the direction. So if I go and press that ridiculous combination and press left, it's going to grab my recording screen and put it onto my main monitor. Now, ignoring that really weird backwards behavior for just a moment, I had to hit five keys to do that one combination. So four keys on one hand and then one key on the other. And those four keys are not easy to hit together. I sort of have to like crunch up my hand to actually hit all of them at once. I should never ever have to hit five keys to do a single combination. Honestly, four keys at once is way too many. There are so many other combinations that could have been used. I understand that it does have to work around the default bindings inside of Awesome, but even so, there are so many other combinations that could have been worked with that were completely ignored. Now, if you do want to use this yourself, there is a little bit of a setup process. It's not really anything that complicated, but if you miss out on any of the steps, it is not going to work properly. So the first thing we need to do is actually go and download the source code. So basically just run a git clone on the repo, and we're going to need to place the source code inside of the same location as our awesome configuration file. So basically just drop the entire folder in there and then you'll be good. Now inside of your rc.lua file, basically your awesome configuration file, we need to go and add a single line in here. We need to go and add in this line right here. So require, we're requiring collision, and then we're going to have empty brackets right here. These empty brackets can be used for something, but we'll get to that in just a bit. The next thing we need to do is eliminate a couple of lines from the default configuration. So basically these four lines right here, the binding for a awful.tag.viewprev and awful.tag.viewnext, because these conflict with some of the bindings inside of Awesome Collision. Once that's done, all we need to do is go and restart Awesome. So there's a couple of ways we can go and do this. Obviously, you can reboot your system, but you can restart Awesome from inside of Awesome. One way you can do that is from your terminal. So if we go and echo the awesome.restart command to the Awesome client, 
and then run that, it will go and restart awesome. In my case, I've actually got a hotkey to do it, so I can go and press Super Shift W, and it does the exact same thing. Once you've done that, then it should start working, but you may experience some issues. Basically, if you've messed with a lot of key bindings like I have, you may actually run into weird collisions where your bindings are colliding with the awesome collision bindings, and it's not really sure what to actually go and run. In those cases, basically your only option, unless it's changing the key alongside the modifier key, is just getting rid of your bindings, because there's not actually any way to go and modify the modifiers. That's the one problem I have with the key rebinding here. We can actually go, if we go over to the GitHub page here, and scroll down a bit to the using different keys section, if we want to go and change it over to Vim keys instead of arrow keys, that can be done perfectly fine, but we can't say go and change, you know, this action right here from using Control Mod and Alt. It's always going to be Control Mod and Alt. And that is the biggest problem I do have with this. It makes it very difficult to rebind everything because there are so many hotkeys in this module that the developers decided that it was going to be easier just to automatically generate them. And personally, I think that was a horrible idea. I like the idea of having the option to automatically generate, but I'd like also the option to have everything stripped out and let me go and bind stuff the way I want to bind it. Pretty much the only way you can go and properly rebind everything is to go and fork the repo and modify the modifiers like that. Which I don't really think is a great solution because I don't have that much experience working with Lua, so going and doing something like that would take me quite a while. Now, if you're like me and you don't like the existing color scheme because the red completely conflicts with what you run in your system, you actually can go and recolor everything as you'd expect from something built for awesome. So... All of the colors are assigned to variables that you can go and modify inside of your theme.lua. Some of them are well described up until here. And then I guess they just got bored and didn't feel like finishing the documentation. So none of these are well described, but the name is pretty obvious. So if you go and modify the value of this, you can probably work out what it's doing pretty easily. Now, I'm probably not going to be running this on my system, at least until the binding issue is addressed, which it probably won't ever be addressed because it was sort of set up like this intentionally. Just before I go, I'd like to say that currently only 33.9% of you guys are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you are enjoying the content and you want to help the channel out, that is the easiest way you can go and do it. I don't actually know what it does in the algorithm, but YouTubers say to subscribe, so I'm going to join them in that bandwagon. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to... Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Monster, Will, Brennan, Chickabento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, the Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. I wonder how fast I can actually say that if I tried to. If you'd like to go and support my work, then links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, Libra, Pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and... I'm out.